Okay, so we're working on uh, 5.1, and it's graphs of reciprocal functions. Graphs of reciprocal functions. Okay, so we've done regular reciprocal functions. So, um, for instance, if we did uh, linear y equals x, you know, something that looks like this, and the reciprocal of y equals x is y equals 1 over x, and that would be So what we're doing today is kind of an investigation. We're going to look at um, parent functions and reciprocal functions and see what do they have in common. So some of the characteristics they have in common. And then we'll come up with, so I have a chart here. So we're going to do one over here. So reciprocal functions. Um, and then there's going to be a series of ones that you guys are going to do in the homework. And you, I want you guys to kind of conclude um, certain patterns that happen with the parent function and the reciprocal function. Okay, so there's going to be different ones as uh, such. So in your homework, you're going to be doing a chart for each of them and a graph. So there's a, a bunch of them here. I'll probably use Monday's class to kind of take some of this stuff up and so on. Okay, so let's. I'm going to do one as an example, and then I want you guys to finish off the chart. Okay, so first question asks, so we have our parent function here, I don't know if you guys can see, but it's x squared minus 4, and the reciprocal function will be the same thing, but over 1, so 1 over x squared minus 4. Okay, so first, we're going to look at the x squared minus 4. So the first one says, are there any zeros, are the zeros and or vertical asymptotes? Okay, so if we have x squared minus 4, okay, that is quadratic, that got moved down 4 units, so it's going to look something like this, okay? But we want to know what these x-intercepts are, okay? So to find the x-intercepts, that means your y value is 0, so we set this equal to 0. We set it equal to 0, and now isolate for x squared, so plus 4. So we have x squared equals 4, and then we square root it. So we get x equals 2. Okay? But since we square root it, it is a plus or minus 2. So our x intercepts or our zeros will be at negative 2 and positive 2. By the way, this chapter is when stuff starts to pick up with regards to difficulty. Um, so this stuff, um, you have to stay on top of it. Um, there's five sections in this one. You must stay on top of it. But the, every lesson relates to each other. So you end up doing a lot of the same things for all five sections. Okay, so we have zero. Um, so a, a quadratic, that makes the parabola. We don't have, sorry, VA is a vertical asymptote. So there aren't any vertical asymptotes here. Okay, so then we have the graph 1 over x squared minus 4. So you guys haven't seen something like this before, so you probably don't know what it looks like. Okay, so don't worry about that right now. What we want to do is how do we find the, the zeros or the vertical um, asymptotes. Okay, so again, if we want to find zeros, we set y equals so if I do 0 equals 1 over x squared minus 4, and now I have to isolate for x. So what you could do with fractions is you multi cross multiply here. But when I cross multiply this times 0, it ends up being 0. Okay, so if you get an answer like that, that means we have a 0x, and then that doesn't make sense. So whenever this happens, that means there aren't any x-intercepts. Okay, there aren't any x-intercepts. So just like we had uh, the regular reciprocal function, there aren't any x-intercepts for this one. So in this case, for here, we do not have any x-intercepts. So we then have to find out, oh, is there any vertical asymptotes then? So there aren't any zeros, so we know it doesn't cross the x-axis, but maybe we have some vertical asymptotes. So to find out what the vertical asymptotes are, 
do you have to figure out what can I plug into x squared that will make the denominator zero? So what is it that I could substitute into x squared that will make this zero? And the reason why we say that is because if we have a zero in the denominator, it becomes undefined. So it's one divided by zero, and then there aren't any points for it. Okay, so that will give you your, your asymptotes, okay? So we say, what, the, what value makes this, well, sorry, what value will make this whole thing um, zero? Okay, so you probably look at it. Well, if I plug in a positive two, so two squared is four, four minus four is zero, so that would work. Okay, you could also plug in negative two. So negative two squared is four, minus four is zero. Okay, if you're not sure, just take the denominator, make it, set it equal to zero, and then solve for x. Okay, so we just did this. Square root, and you get x is equal to plus or minus two. Okay, so that plus or minus two will make the denominator zero, so the vertical asymptotes in this case, for the reciprocal function, is negative two and positive two. Okay, so it actually has two vertical asymptotes. Okay, so it's not just one, it has two in this case. All right, moving on to the next part. So again, sorry, let me rewind. So again, to find your zeros, set this equal to zero and solve for x, so you can do it for both. To do vertical asymptotes, well, we, we know quadratic doesn't have any asymptotes, but the reciprocal does. So you have to figure out what makes the denominator zero in order to find the reciprocal. Sorry, in order to find the asymptote. Okay, so now it says, where are my um, positive intervals? So when is x, when are my values above the x-axis? Okay, so if we were to graph this, So we said it would move four down. Okay, so so positive intervals are, are when it's above the x-axis. Okay, so it's above the x-axis at this point here and at this point here. So everything, so everything that's less than negative two is above the x-axis, and everything greater than positive 2 is above the x-axis. Okay, so they want it in intervals. Okay, so it'll be negative 2 and less. Let me include that. So just let me double check something. I'm just looking at the square brackets or not. So, uh, so it's less than negative two. Don't put equal to because equal to is not above the x-axis. It's uh, at on the x-axis. So from our pos our positive values are from negative two, which is our highest value, to negative infinity. Okay, so we're looking at our x values. So negative two and less. Also, it's from positive two greater than, so from positive 2 to positive infinity. Okay, so those will be the values that are above the x-axis. I will let you know that it's the same for the reciprocal function. So it's going to be exact same things. Maybe I should have graphed it first. Okay, eight negative intervals. So when is it below the x-axis? Well, I just erased it, but it's below the x-axis between the two x-intercepts. So the negative interval intervals goes from 
negative 2 to positive 2. So remember, it goes from, so below the x-axis is this part here, which is from negative 2 to positive 2. And you'll note that it's the same for this one as well. I'm just going to pause it there because what I'm going to do is graph it out. 